Welcome everybody, this is Mr. Fugu, and you're watching Mr. Fugu Data Science. Today we're doing uh, the second part of our Mongo series. We will be creating updates, uh, dealing with nested data, indexing, and doing aggregations. The uh, link for the code will be in the description below. If you like this and would like to watch any of my other videos, feel free. Mr. Fugu Data Science, y'all. Okay, let's get into this. We're creating uh, nested dictionary data. So, what I did was, I'll just show you what the data looks like. If you would like to follow along, you're going to need to go in the description and get the code from the GitHub. So, I created what I thought was pretty cool. Basically, if I was a recruiter and I had a bunch of clients with particular skills and specialty I wanted to dig through and find particular things so I said alright let's create a nested dictionary where we have each candidate who has a first a last name a skill set stored as an array uh, the state that they live in their specialty their experience level and are they willing to relocate alright I used uh, PyMongo to send the data so then I am using the uh, database from last time which is Berkeley I am calling this table or collection recruiter clients and what I could do is I can uh, drop this database and start from scratch where you're going to be and That'll be uh, DB re recruiter client dot drop. Okay, cool. So then that's let's show the collections. Okay, so the other two collections, those aren't what we're using. Those are just test scenarios. So this send this data over real quick. Okay, sent it over. Bam, there we go. So, send over the collection. Now, let's have some super fun, happy times. Uh, dealing with the nested uh, data, just think of sub documents, okay? Where if you're trying to access inner documents, since this is JavaScript, you need to do uh, think of methods outer key dot inner key. Okay? So, Here's our two little examples that we're looking at. Let's do some uh, queries, okay? So, for the nested query that we're going to start with, let's find candidate skills where these people have a skill set of only Spark. And let's exclude uh, printing out the uh, ID numbers, all right? So, let's first do this. Let's actually look at what one of these looks like inside of Sparks. I mean, inside of uh, MongoDB. So remember that you have this ID that's unique to each one of your documents, basically like your uh, primary key if you're thinking of relational databases. So let's just paste that in and see what happens. These are all the people that only have the skill set of Spark. Okay, so. Mr. S Mr. Chavez, someone named Hawking, Olson, etc. All right. Now, how about we include all the people who have the skill set of Python, but we want to include with this all operator all of the skill sets that they have. Okay. So we do that. So if we look here, right here you notice that the above example had only uh, Spark, whereas all of these will have anything that includes Python within it, which is awesome. So then that means that you you know you have a dynamic query. It's not just you know like just one character or one word. We can look for things that are not included. So let's find everyone who has a skill set, but the skill set does not include. Python. 
So that's the operator of the NIN. So here's all the people. None of them have skill sets relating to Python. Okay, so if you were a mean recruiter and said, I don't care if you know Python, I want somebody else because Python people are interesting and I'm not interesting. So then you say, okay, cool, mean recruiter. Now, let's look for some people that live in California or uh, Florida or, pardon me, that's the next one. Let's look for people that live in California and they don't want to relocate because they just like the weather there and the earthquakes. Okay, cool. So these are the particular people who like earthquakes and don't want to move, but they really love the weather. See? No relocation. No relocation. Where is that state that they live in? State is California. State is California. Okay, cool. Next thing. What about all these people who live in Florida, but they, or California? So if you had a job in two different locations, and you could just pluck people off that are local. And you could say, okay, fine. I'm going to close this out. It's about to open up Pice Charm. There we are. So now we have all these people who say, okay, I live in California and I live in Florida. California, Florida. Awesome. All right. So you use the db.collection.find and then you have your good old operators that you can use. The OR operator. You could also use an AND operator. Um, now let's look at doing some updates. All right. So there's a lot of parameters. Uh, there's a lot of uh, operators that you can use, but it has two parameters. You have the uh, criteria and an operation where the criteria is some, think of like an object that you'd use with a find statement. And then the operation is either a modifier operation or it's an object that you will match uh, to the fields in your document or you will replace. Okay? So here's a little table that I created. It's not extensive as I noted here. I would suggest that you go into the documentation that I provided so you can look into that. Here's the general formatting that I adapted from uh, the Mongo documentation so you have an idea. Let's update the last name for one person using the set operator. This isn't the only operator that you can use. Here's, here's a few more. Okay. So what we're doing is we're updating one person where we're taking this very specific, this might not work because I just uh, recreated the uh, collection. So I might paste in a new one right now. So we're saying, okay, let's set somebody with the last name of uh, Stout with an E. So let's go into here and find, let's find a person. Um, Let's find out if this works. Ooh, it worked. Okay, so it, re, it redid it with the same thing for this person. Now let's verify that this, this person actually uh, has an update now. Yeah, recruiter, client style. Well, actually, I should have it here. Uh, Fine. So we're gonna look for the uh, the candidate with the last name of uh, Stout with an E now. And there we are. There's our good old stout with this same object ID as this. So that's good. That means that we can update um, information now. Fine. So we can also update the, uh, we could use the personal we just updated the last name. And you could also append or add 
with the push operator. All right, so I'm using this push operator to append into my skills array or list, whatever you like to call it. So now we have the ability to add into an array. Okay. So if you noticed on this one, before we added it was Java, R, C++, and TensorFlow. But if we look for uh, Ms. Stout again, we'll notice that Python was appended to that list, which is very handy because if you need to update later and and excuse me, if you need to add in data to a collection later, that's very useful. So that push allowed me to add it into the uh, the list. Okay, indexing. So indexing is really interesting and highly useful. It speeds up your queries. Uh, it allows you to save time. You know because you're not you're not searching through. Uh, you're limiting your searches instead of uh, you know randomly going through the whole um, list of documents to find something in particular. Okay, so that's that's really good. A few uh, use cases are B-Tree, Spherical, JSON, and uh, 2D. There's a vast array of things that you can look into, but we're not covering those today. This just gets you, a, you know, some syntax and gets you some examples to practice with to get you a little uh, familiar. So, the setup and index where we have two fields, skills and specialty, where we search using text. All right, we're using a text search, which is awesome. So think of like if you were typing in something like some random text into Google and you're using some search terms and you're looking for something to pop out. That's basically what's going on here. So it's pretty cool. So we created our index now and we see that we got our little index created. Awesome. Now we got to use our index. So what you got to do is when you create an index, you say db dot and then your collection name and then create index. And then whatever you want to put in here. So I'm calling I'm calling this specific field and since this is nested, I say candidate dot skills and then I call the text. And then uh, text is the formatting I want to use and then I'm doing the same thing for the specialty. Okay, and then from here, I want to find any text within these two fields that has Python and machine learning, and I want to search for that. This is all the uh, people who have machine learning or Python um, in their fields, the two fields that I was looking for, and this prints everyone out. So this would be really useful if you were saying, okay, if I'm looking for a particular um, set of people or groups of people who have particular skill sets or specialties, and let me narrow this down really quick with just a text search. Then I could say, all right, if I'm trying to find out what are all my indexes that I have currently in this collection, we could do that by db.recruiterclients.get indexes with a capital I. Now we have this, okay? So we have this as our, um, here's just the ID one, and that's not what I'm messing with here. This is the text one that was created, okay? So if um, we're using this here, it's just a text search was the name that I created. There it is right there. That's the name of this uh, index that we just created, which is here. If you don't create a name for it, it makes it a little difficult for you to uh, delete it later. So then we just did our find. We got our indexes. Now this drop, for instance, if you were in a situation where you just wanted to drop all of your uh, indexes, you could do that with this. So we say db.run command, and then we want to say this drop all of our indexes where, where we were uh, calling the recruit, recruiter clients collection, and the index 
and we're looking for all of them. That's what's going on with this star. Now we just deleted all of them. Now we could say, okay, let's just check. All right, the only thing we have right now left is the ID stuff. Okay, fine. That's not something I can mess with. So then let's do this. If you are looking to drop multiple indexes and you know them by name, let's assume that you run the same command, but then you just place here each one of those names. For instance, you could have placed this name in there. And then if you had another name for another one that you made, you could have put that as well, which have been fine. Now, something was really cool. We could use wildcards. So we could say, let's just look through all of all of the text. Alright? If we have some unstructured data and we don't have anything specific and we want to find specific terms within the data, let's play around with that. All right, so you can create it this way. And then you can create it. There we go. You can create it, and you can do the same type of query that we did. Where is it? You can do the same type of query that you did here, which is really cool. See? But it looks through everything instead of just the specific fields. Now, we could drop that because we don't need that right now. Just call it by the name, so dot drop index and then the name of it. Perfect. Now it's gone. Now, we can run into our good old aggregates. This is really cool because there's three main types. You could do a pipeline, which is really useful, where you're having a multi-stage index. Uh, it's really good for improving uh, performance. Uh, you could use it for sharding. Uh, you can do filtering, grouping, averaging, look for specific fields or just a, a field. You can uh, do matches. You could do regular expressions. There's a lot of cool things you could do. Then the other type are MapReduce, which are a little less effective than the pipeline, but they're highly flexible since you're using uh, JavaScript and you have the map and reduce where the map is doing the splitting which does the operations and then the reduce just combines everything after the fact. And then you have single purpose aggregation where you're uh, basing this on a single collection. Now uh, we're going to just do one example here but it's pretty it's pretty lofty and it's really uh, really cool. So what you're doing is you're doing the dot aggregate method and then you're saying alright let's project from our candidate dot first name where we're saying that's true and we're doing that for the last name because we want to print out the first and the last name and then I'm naming the new condition that I'm calling which would be the number of skills a person has so we're doing the uh, condition uh, operator and I'm saying if it is an array then uh, let's use it on our uh, candidate.skills then let's get the size so let's count the length of that array and then if it isn't there let's just make it a zero and there we go so if you pay attention there's the number of skills there's a first name a last name and every person is different. So some people have a lot more skills than others. And that's just how it goes in life. Some people are more specialized in something than another person may be. And that's life. But that's a pretty cool aggregate function. Uh, we could do something a little more simpler with a uh, regular expression type of setup where you're doing a match. You're using the match operator and you say, okay, let's go into specialty and let's just look for all the uh, machine learnings stuff uh, people with machine learning as a specialty and here's all the people I wonder if you could add a count on this uh, nope doesn't it appear I can't I might have to add it inside this I was just curious to figure out how many people were there um, that'll be the end of this video but as always please like and subscribe and make sure to turn on that notification bell
Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye.